Okay, so Pi News episode 65. So first up, let's talk about stock availability. Uh, RPI Locator is showing today, I think the most green bars I've seen in a very long time. So if you're in Germany, uh, then very, very good situation for Compute Module 4s. And if you're in Spain, you can get a Pi 4 2 gig. Uh, so definitely looking better than it's looked for quite some time. On the subject of stock, uh, I did a search earlier on, uh, Raspberry Pi 4 chip shortage. I was just doing some research for Pi News and uh, it came up with an advert. Now I'm going to see if it comes up with the same advert on, yeah weird, it doesn't come up with the same advert on this, but the advert that came up on my iPad is this one from UK RS Online, Raspberry Pi in stock at RS. Uh, 29 Raspberry Pi available. So I clicked on it and it takes you to this. So RS Online is the site that I'd heard of before and I'm sure I've bought stuff from them in the past. Uh, if we scroll down through, uh, there is Raspberry Pi 400 listed, uh, which obviously stock availability has been better on those in recent times. In fact, let's, let's put it in the basket and actually have a look because it looks like you can actually buy these things. Uh, and I'll try this starter kit as well from OKDo. I've already got a Pi 4 8 gig and a Pi 4 4 gig in my basket. Uh, and you can see there's some more kits here as well. So the 8 gig kit still looks a reasonable price at 92.11. Uh, and let's keep scrolling down. And I got excited when I saw this. I thought that um, the Pi 4 2 gig was available at an incredibly good price, but actually it's a, it's a Pi 2. Uh, and I don't know, £33 for buying 150 is that good a price, but then Maybe it's to do with availability, and obviously if you want it for a particular project, although you can buy a Pi 2 uh, on its own for 33.95. Well, let's add that to the basket as well. Let's have a look and see what it shows up. Because when I did this on my iPad, it looked like next day delivery was available, um, but uh, it looks different on a desktop browser. So what have we got? Uh, so Pi 4 8 gig uh, for dispatch, 14th of August, 2023. Uh, the Pi 4 4 gig you can't even order. Uh, 2023, 2023, oh, okay. So I don't know what the 29 was in stock. I mean, maybe if it's showing up on Google as an advert um, and they did have a, a tiny amount of stock, it would have gone very quick. But the CM4s have been showing on Raspberry Pi Locator for the last half hour, so I think they must have a decent amount of stock. Okay, some good news next. Uh, so Raspberry Pi 4 expands 3D potential with Vulkan update. So we've had a few Vulkan updates in the past and haven't seen too much gain on uh, games or emulators, although it looks like it's more suited to, to Android. I definitely found on the Mikatronics board I tried Switching to Vulkan made a dramatic difference. So hopefully with this new update, so you can see here, announced the Pi 4's Vulkan 1.2 conformance on Monday. So we're going to get a gain in games and other 3D Android applications. It is coming to Raspberry Pi OS as well. And it mentions in the story, before Eben Upton worked for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, he was part of the Broadcom team that designed the Video Core 3D GPU chip, the same one mounted on every Raspberry Pi board. And if you want to try the Vulkan 1.2 support on a Pi, so Liz Upton has said, a clean install of Misa from GitHub, then you need to do some high pitch screaming. You also need a Raspberry Pi itself, which purchasing of which can be another scream inducing ordeal at the moment. So it's probably not worth doing on Raspberry Pi OS, although it's interesting to test it. Tom's hardware has also got the story. So version 1.0 came out in November 2020 and 1.1 came out in October 2021 with 23 frequently used Vulkan extensions. So it's only going to be the newer Pi, so the Pi 400, the Compute Module 4 and the Pi 4 uh, as older devices just aren't up to it. And it talks about a contribution here from Roman adding support for Android to the driver. So the fact that we'll get, I would imagine, something like Consta Kang's builds. Well, let's have a look. So Pi 4 and see if anything new has come out. So 12L was the last one. Let's not go for the TV one, the normal one. So May 11th. So if we scroll down the way, in fact, if we do Control F and look for Vulcan in there, it supports Vulcan. Whether or not it will support the Vulcan, I don't know if it's, if it's automatic or if something needs to be changed. Um, it may already show up uh, as Vulkan 1.3. Be worth looking at that. Maybe I'll try and download the latest version and have a look with Ada64 and see if it's already supported. Uh, but also just keep looking at Consta Kang's page. Always on the ball with, uh, with the Android updates for Pi. 
some Facebook Pi stories next. Uh, so RetroPie official from Keo Deakin, this post, and uh, just for the pictures really. So taken from the Pi group, someone hit the mother load at an auction. So we flicked through the photos. You can see there's a case with a big fan on it and a load of Pi stacked up inside and obviously loads of speculation about what it was being used for in the comments, but uh, I just liked it as an image really. Also on RetroPie official was this very cool looking but very tiny arcade cabinet with huge joystick uh, but obviously you'd have to have a, a reasonable sized joystick but um, there's all sorts mentioned in how to build the project and everything it does look really cool uh, I don't know how usable it is because it's so tiny but it's a really nice project and there's various different pictures of the build and everything else in there next one up on Raspberry Pi and DIY projects hi everyone I would love to share our latest internship project built on Raspberry we call it the IoT lock. Generate a QR code in mobile app, scan QR code with code reader, the gate opens for five seconds. After that time, the gate is closed and the code expires in one minute. And if we scroll down, so you can see a QR code on the phone, QR reader, all connected to a Raspberry Pi. Very nice work. Loads of comments on there if you wanna go through them. Nice image here uh, from a micro center in St. Louis. You can see a nice big stack of Pi 4, 4 gigs available for sale. I don't know how long they lasted, but um, yeah, very, very nice to see. And a nice usage for a Pico. Uh, so a Bluetooth setup for a Duke controller, uh, which is the old Xbox controller, really big, chunky controller. I'm not sure if there's any pictures of the controller, though. Maybe if we have a look at their page, and there's more information and code and all sorts in here. So here is the Duke controller, and in the post there's more information here. You can see some ribbon cables. That's worth keeping an eye on. And uh, on the Raspberry Pi site, we had another update to the Raspberry Pi CarPlay hack. So this has been able to use Apple CarPlay through a Tesla. Tesla don't support CarPlay or Android Auto as standard. So you've got to use their own proprietary system, but this hack gets around it. So the in-car browser talks to a Raspberry Pi and it asked it to display the CarPlay interface on the Tesla screen. Apple apps, including Maps and Apple Music, are now available to the driver. System works while driving and can also be mounted with the media buttons on the Tesla steering wheel. It's using a Pi 4. Looks like you can use a Pi 3 as well. And again, loads of pictures in there if you're interested in doing this. So a very cool GitHub here from Fruitbat. So if we scroll down, here's a couple of Spectrums. I had a 48K back in the day. And you can see various features here. So DVI over HDMI, LCD support, VGA video, USB keyboard and joysticks, PS2 keyboard. So really, really nice support. And if we have a look here, there's various different boards that are supported by this as well. So you can see like this one here, Pi Computer ZX, which looks pretty cool with the little display with the uh, image of the CRT screen. And it talks about which ones, like breadboard, retro VGA, Pi Computer Max, Pi Computer ZX, Pi Moroni Pico DV demo base. And there's some screenshots of Spectrum games. It was all about playability on the Spectrum games. So the graphics weren't great, although they were for the time, but the gameplay was really, really good. And there's definitely a different image. It was this one that came up. Um, so I won't, I won't play the video, but I'll just look for the image that, that came up on it because it looks really cool. Yeah, it was this one here, that Pico ZX Spectrum. Not sure how big it is because there's nothing next to it. So it's not one of the images included in the GitHub here, although I do like the look of that one. Um, but uh, yeah, just that image just, just got me interested really. Although I'm not sure how the keyboard is, although the keyboard in the original ZX Spectrum wasn't great. More Pico from Tom's Hardware. So an RP2040 Meet 6502. So an Apple II computer being emulated on a Pico. It's no secret the Raspberry Pi can emulate a number of devices and the Raspberry Pi Pico is no exception. In his latest project, Eric Badger demonstrates the Pico's ability to emulate a 6502 computer and shows a side-by-side -side comparison of the Pico running next to an Apple II computer. Very impressive what people can get out of the little tiny Pico. I'm more of a Zero fan. Um, the Zero 2W is, is so easy because it just works like a full computer. You've got to do a lot more work with a Pico, but uh, people who are clever enough to do it are doing some amazing things. Software update. So I've done reviews on Pop! OS before and really like it. It's a really nice operating system and the latest version 2204 is now available for a Pi 4. It used to be that you had to kind of play around and adapt versions of software to work with a Pi 4. Now all of the Ubuntu based operating systems tend to come out as a dedicated Pi 4 version so you don't have to do any work, you just download the image. 
So Hackster.io had this story. Uh, Billy O'Sullivan's Paparazzo turns a Raspberry Pi HQ camera module into a chunky handheld camera. And it is pretty chunky. But what's interesting about this is he's made an, a point and shoot operating system using Pi Game and the Pi Camera library. And uh, it would be interesting to have seen that, but there are no pictures of the actual interface. So I don't know quite how it looks. I've used Cheese in the past as a way of being able to take photos, but I haven't really had what I'd say was a nice easy to use operating system like we're used to on a mobile phone or something like that. Uh, although that said, I'm sure it can be done with Android because there's loads of camera apps on Android. So if you were going to do it, maybe you would use that. But this is impressive to do it from the ground up. Now this is something, I think I've covered this a few times before. So Sharp Eye Kibo Kit turns a Raspberry Pi 02W into a pocket computer with a keyboard and display. So if we scroll down, I think I've showed this image before. Uh, but there also is a 3D printed case as well, sort of a Game Boy size uh, case, which would be really nice to see. So here you can see the, the empty casing. But yeah, definitely worth watching if you're looking for a handheld device. And you could see running Space Invaders here. Although Pi Zero 2W will go way beyond that on games. So I had a comment the other day from Suhaib, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, Raspberry Pi Plastics, uh, which I wasn't aware of as a site. I don't think I've come across this before. Uh, but this is a keyboard for a Pi 4 or a Pi Zero. You can see it says no Raspberry Pi included. A seven inch white Bluetooth keyboard and charge cable. And if we have a look at some of the pictures, it is quite interesting. And so when I first looked at it, I thought, yeah, this looks quite cool, but it's gonna be expensive. It's 20 pounds. Uh, so I think they've done a good job for what they've done. So you can see the keyboard tilts up here to reveal the insides. Uh, we have a fan on the base here as well. A couple of cable ports. Here's all the bits sort of shown separately and to see how it all goes together. So there is space either for a Pi 4 in there or you can see a Pi 0 in this one. So there's more information here. So we can see the back of the Pi 4 in that image. Uh, we can see the 0 in this one. Keyboard looks quite nice, quite nice and clear and everything. Uh, it does look like a nice piece of kit. I might just order one anyway, just because it's actually a very sensible price for quite a cool little product. See, we've got some LED lights on the top there. Yeah, very nice. This is very cool looking. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. You can see it's uh, like a map of the world, but there's all sorts of images in here. If I just flick through, I mean, have a look at the whole video, but there's some really nice effects just to something like an ornament or something like that. There you go. So there's various different things that it goes through. I really like the Minecraft cube. I better pause that, but what an impressive looking thing. Uh, as a piece of tech, I really like the look of that. So from Reddit, Raspberry Pi found running lock boxes in Paris. It's always nice to see uh, a Raspberry Pi display being used for all sorts of commercial applications. And then uh, from Tom's Hardware, this Amazon Alexa controlled lock. So you can see all the bits in here. Works with the Raspberry Pi Pico. And there's a video on there as well. If you're looking to, to do this sort of thing, there's all sorts of information in here as well. So worth having a look at. And uh, another lock. A uh, bit of information here. And I, I heard this on, I think it was Daily Tech News Show they were talking about this. This is uh, a lock from Infineon. And the weird thing about this is it's powered by the NFC from a phone. So the device itself doesn't have to be powered or battery operated. But when you hold your phone up with NFC, it actually unlocks the lock wirelessly using the power from NFC to power the lock up. It kind of charges it up very quickly and then it unlocks. And I just thought that was fascinating. The fact that you can have that lock uh, and it doesn't have to have any power at all. The power is transferred from the phone. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just very cool. So I'll leave a link for that story as well. Anyway, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.